do you think of math as beautiful in the sense uh, that art is beautiful? I went to college and uh, studied math. In my freshman year, I took a graduate course that was on abstract algebra, group theory and some vector spaces and so on. And I was very puzzled by this course. I passed it, but I really didn't understand what it was all about. Hmm. But that summer, I got a book on algebra. And within a couple of weeks, I realized, oh, that's what it's all about. I just had this, this uh, over the summer, this uh, vision or, mm. or whatever. The, uh, epiphany, uh, almost. Epiphany mm-hmm. that uh, this is what this is all about. And from then on, the next two years, I took the most advanced algebra classes. And uh, in my third year, it was with a guy named Iwasawa, and it was Topics in Algebra, it was called. And I think I was the only person in the class. It was a, it was a graduate class, and I was in my third year. And uh, I think I was the only one who solved all the problems, and that, that was the homework. Wow. So, uh, so I was good at algebra, but my, I was also introduced to differential geometry in that same uh, year. And uh, I loved it. I just loved it. And uh, uh, felt that uh, I would do very well at that, which which, which I did. I, when I learned Stokes' theorem, that I thought that was the most beautiful theorem I ever saw. <laughs> Stokes' theorem. It generalizes the fundamental theorem of calculus. It, it you know, it just uh, the divergence theorem, and so on, all are wrapped up in Stokes' theorem and this notion of differential forms. Yes. You know what a differential form is? Yeah, of course. We're going to talk about that next. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. You want to describe it for my listeners, though? Uh, the differential form and, and why it's so beautiful, as you say? Yeah, why don't you? Yeah, I, well... Uh, I like it. How you describe it. <laughs> so we, right. we talk about the, the, you know, kind of relationship. It's almost, you know, mirroring, I believe, what Hilbert said, you know, the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics in... Uh, no, in that, was, that, that was Wigner. Oh, Wigner. Sorry, Wigner. Uh, it's almost there's a second order unreasonable uh, effectiveness of geometry and physics. And uh, we talk about our, our connection between geometric forms and uh and their utility in geometry general relativity and uh more recently in in, in terms of, of quantum field theory and understanding the properties of um of you know at the the, uh, the behavior particles in these abstract spaces and uh, lately there's been a lot of uh, controversy there's a young well i shouldn't say young he's a couple of years older than me and i'm not young but there's a man by the name of eric weinstein who i believe you know and he's he's trying to develop what he calls a, um, a, a, a really a geometric theory of all of physics, and it's very controversial. But effectively finding the analogs of particles that we call fermions in an abstract fourteen-dimensional geometric space, and these connections, one forms, two forms, metric connections, these are vital attributes of. Uh, of this model that he's constructed, and it's and some of it's in analogy with uh, with work that's that's already been done. And what what he what Eric this Eric Weinstein has done is he's made a digital version of your of the famous Simon Center uh, for Geometry and Physics has what's called the iconic wall of mathematics and physics. And yeah. on this and on this huge wall, 465 square foot wall, are the basic. And I'm going to have a link, and I'll show images in the video of this conversation, you have uh, the metric equation, you have Einstein equations, which are you know, two forms, um, uh, geometric objects in differential geometry. And some claim that this is the pinnacle, not only of math and physics, but really of civilization, that the, uh, that the equations on your wall ha- are represent the pinnacle of what we've been able to achieve as a species. And you said something interesting a few minutes ago. You said when you understood Stokes' theorem, uh, it it was beautiful to you. And I want to connect that to the Simon Center, the wall. Do you think of math as 
beautiful in the sense uh, that art is beautiful. I mean, we often hear this debate, you know, is mathematics discovered or invented? I don't think people would say uh, Michelangelo discovered, you know, the David inside of a block of marble, even though he would say stuff like that. But I, he actually created it. But mathematics and what's chiseled into your wall in the Simon Center, do you feel that that's, you know, discovered or, or really is it invented by the human mind? And then the, the follow-up question after you answer that will be, is it beautiful? Is it, does it rank amongst, alongside great music, great artwork? And if so, why? So first, is mathematics discovered or invented the way art or, uh, you know, inventions are, are found? Yeah, that's a uh, standard question. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's both. Hmm. How so? Every, every true theorem is out there. The number of true theorems is, I believe, infinite. And the number of definitions that one can make is infinite. Mm. So all these things are out there. But on the other hand, you don't know this. There's no book of all these things because... There's an infinite number of possible theorems and definitions. The key is, in doing mathematics, to, let's say, find a good definition, a definition that will get you somewhere, a definition that uh, would unify, perhaps, other things, and so on. So that's a creative act. So it's a creative act to find something interesting in an infinite field, and in, in an infinite collection of, uh, of things. So it's out there, but you have to find it and have good taste uh, in, in, in finding something that will really go somewhere. Mm. So it's guided by wisdom as well as knowledge. I, I think that's, that's interesting. And then the question, the follow-up question, um, is uh, is math a form of art? Does it have commonalities? Is it different than music or art? Does it move you? I've always been curious. Does it? Do you feel? Does it invoke any emotions when you look at the wall? Not just for its artistic beauty, which it is, but when you see the Aharon of Bohm effect, or you see, um, you know, the, the, the Dirac equation, or, or just a pure mathematical relationship, Stokes Stokes theorem. When you see these, does it evoke an emotion inside of Jim Simons? Well, I mean, I've seen these things so often, it's, it's hard to uh, keep getting emotional about it. <laughs> I know, uh, but yeah, but the, the notion but, of but, is math evocative to you? Are you an emotional person, first of all? And then, you know, does math evoke great beauty the way that great art or music does in some people? Well, math certainly evokes beauty. Uh, it's, it's when someone does something good or whatever, it's, it's, it's very often it's characterized, oh, that's a beautiful theorem. And that, that's a beautiful result. The word beauty is, permeates mathematics. So uh, I think there's an aesthetic to it. That that's why we use that word. Mm. And, of course, uh, uh, art, regular art is, can be beautiful, and poems can be beautiful, and uh, uh, all those things. But mathematics definitely... Uh, is characterized by beauty. 